About a year ago, I figured out that you can take your favorite fruit and grow the seed into a plant. Well, I love lychees, or lychees, don't come at me, but they're pretty hard to grow. I put a few of the seeds on a damp piece of paper towel, sealed them in a glass jar airtight, and what do you know? The tails started to sprout after just seven days. I kept them in the paper towel for three more weeks and I kept checking them every few days to make sure that they were growing nicely. I also made sure to keep the piece of paper towel they were living on damp, so I spritzed that about every three days. After those three weeks passed what felt like a whole lifetime, the little tails were finally ready to poke their bums in some soil. I planted it in soil and it grew into the most cute plant ever. But since I had three seeds germinating, I left the other two on the paper towel to germinate and this is what they looked like. So I decided to also plant this seedling in soil too. And it started to sprout up so nicely I was very excited. I was a bit confused though to see that the leaves sprouted up red, not green. The red leaves in a lychee plant are typically a sign of new growth and as the leaves mature they often turn green. This is a common occurrence in many plants where the young leaves have a different color than the mature ones. It's just nature doing its thing, nothing to worry about and as they grew they did turn green and as I looked closer I noticed that some of the leaves looked like they were being eaten by some sort of critter and upon taking a closer look there most definitely was something eating these leaves but I didn't see any aphids so it must have been a caterpillar or an ant but I put it in a new spot in hopes the bugs wouldn't be in the new corner I chose and I repotted it as it outgrew its old pot and even though the leaves were a little bit bitten they never fully recovered and grew back that is still okay because soon I started to see new shoots poking out and at this time it was around August so I thought we were okay to leave it outside because it was technically still summer here in Canada that doesn't end till about November but for some reason the plant was having a hard time the leaves leaves started to droop a bit and fade in color. Not all of the leaves, but some of them. And at this point I was confused because I was doing everything right. So I figured let's just let nature do its thing and if we're meant to have a lychee tree then we will. After all, lychees have a romantic history. Legend has it that in ancient China the emperor bestowed lychees upon his favorite concubine as a token of his love. And that is all that I had to do, give these lychees a sweet gesture and a token of my love. So so I decided to bring it inside and let it live under my grow lights and I started to save its life, okay? I'm basically God because this thing survived the entire winter under those grow lights. Although it didn't grow too much bigger, the droopy leaves had life back in them and it was looking alive and well and ready to be put back outside for the summer. But here's where I really learned that plants are all trial and <coughs> because for some reason the plant started to lose its leaves when I put it outside and I figured okay, maybe it's just that it went through a shock from the weather change from the indoor to the outdoors and since the roots at the bottom were probably still white and alive because the stem was still green, I figured let's just leave it. It, let it do its thing, let it grow back the leaves since that's happened before with other plants I've grown like my lemon plant. But I don't really know why it didn't grow back. For a full year, the stem just stayed like this. It was just not thriving. And listen, if you know anything about me and my channel, you know that I was not happy with these results. So of course, I got one more round of lychees to try again because after all, it had almost been two years now with this plant and I really did not want to give up until I had my lychee plant that was green, alive, and thriving. So you know the drill, I got the seeds all knocked up and germinated and then got them in soil and waited. This was the progress of that plant. It grew up so nicely, I was pumped. The leaves were green, porcelain, and doing really well. So as it grew, I got hungry for more exotic lychee-like fruits and learned about lychee's little brother. This hairy fruit called rambutan or rambutan, don't come at me again for the pronunciation, but it kind of looks like a lychee when you open it, and they're part of the same family, the soapberry family. At first, I thought this was a creature that came straight from the crevasses of the deep sea, but it's not. I just found them so cool, especially because they were named rambutans because of their hair-like spikes and because the word rambut 
and Malay means hair. They've got a reddish rind with long soft spikes and when you open it you reveal the white flesh and even though it looks like a lychee it actually tastes more like a strawberry mangosteen kiwi hybrid. It's really good. And listen I know it can take up to six years to grow and fruit but you can get up to 6,000 pieces of rambutan per season so it's definitely worth it and I even found out that you can snack on the seeds. They're edible. That forbidden almond becomes like a snack. I haven't personally done that because we've got to grow the seeds instead of eat the seeds and that's what we're doing. And you won't believe what happened. I was so excited to have a little plant. I revealed the seed and I had to be careful not to break the seed inside of the flesh because at first I tried peeling that outer layer of skin off of the seeds because I usually do that with most of the seeds. But that was a bad idea because I broke the seed. So I just left that layer on the rest of the seeds and I was kind of surprised at how weak the seeds were. But then I remembered they're edible so I guess that makes more sense. But once I had my seeds I got some on a damp piece of paper towel to germinate and I planted others in soil, you know, gotta give us options just in case one happened to fail because we all know my fail rates can be quite high at some times. But anywho, soon time passed. But for some reason, they just got all moldy. The ones in the paper towel looked like this. I refused to even open it because that was like the worst mold gross stuff I've ever seen and the ones in soil just never grew so I guess it's safe to say that this fruit might need stratification which is just putting the seeds in the fridge or out in the winter weather to experience a cold period to promote germination of seedlings. But I wanted to try again once the winter passed and the summer sun came back out. I just really wanted to grow the hairy balls of nature. So I got my hands on one more round of rambutans and tried again but this time with a south facing view instead of a north and I got to work. You already know the drill. I opened them, removed the flesh, revealed the seed. Placed some seeds on a damp piece of paper towel ready to germinate airtight in a glass jar. You can also use a little plastic bag. And then I placed the rest of the seeds in soil to see if they would grow in a little pot. As I wait for my rambutan plant to grow, I found out that not only do lychees have a little brother, but they also have a little sister and her name is Longan. Long ends are straight up mandrake seeds from Harry Potter and we needed one of these things growing in the garden. They're also a member of the soap berry family like Rambutan and Lychee. So I grabbed the seeds and got to work, you know the drill. When you break them open you reveal the glossy translucent flesh like a lychee but more musky. It's chewy and a bit rubbery and kind of reminds me of a mochi tapioca hybrid. It tastes so good. Well I removed the glossy flesh and revealed those naked seeds and got them on a piece of damp paper towel to jerk germinate. So cool because the name Longan translates to dragon eye in Chinese and rightfully so because the shiny black seeds resemble an eyeball. Well these dragon eyes grew tails so fast in just three days they started to break open and grow. So once the tails were long enough I planted them in soil and waited for the growth of our baby Longan plant. It was growing really nicely. I was a proud mother and as it sprouted I also left some seeds in the paper towel to grow even bigger. I didn't plant all of them. And this is what the progress of those seeds looked like. So once the tails on those were real long, I planted those in another bed of soil too. And both plants were doing really well. I repotted them as needed. And at this time, it was around the end of the summer. So like our lychee plant, I plan to bring it inside soon to live under the grow light. For a while it was doing well, but then the winter came and it kind of messed everything up because here in Canada, these plants just can't grow, eh? Well listen, even if a plant looks dead, you gotta look underneath at the roots. If they're white and they've got life left in them, they can grow, turn green, survive and thrive. And if there are any leaves, you're good to save the life of that plant. But if the roots are black, you might not have as much luck. But as this long end grew, just like the lychee, it also started to get some yellow leaves. But there was still some nice green growth. So I tried my best to let nature do its thing and what do you know? The yellow parts of the leaves started to turn green again and that's evidence on why you need to trust the process. I thanked nature and then brought the plant inside and now we wait for our long end plant to see if it thrives throughout the winter inside. So my friends, this was the two to three year journey of our attempts at growing the members of the soap fairy family. We grew lychees, rambutans, longans, and learned about the trials and errors associated with growing these exotic fruits in an urban environment and in a cold place just like Canadia. These sweet, juicy, fleshed fruits are all known for their distinct flavors, rightfully so because they're so tasty. And I'm just so excited to see what will happen with the growth of these plants in the future. So make sure to come back for updates. Don't forget to like, comment, follow, subscribe, and remember that on this channel we take the seeds from inside exotic fruits and grow them into full-blown houseplants that fruit. 
thank you so much for watching. Always remember that I love you. And I'll see you next week.